San Onofre went offline in January after accelerated tube wear was discovered inside Unit 2 and 3 steam generators. A small radiation leak was also found. Southern California Edison will present federal regulators with a report detailing the root causes of the tube wear in early October. In the meantime, a new report finds damage to the steam generators at San Onofre is worse than previously thought. Joining me is the co-author of that report, Daniel Hirsch, president of the Committee to Bridge the Gap, a nuclear pol policy organization. He also lectures on the issue at UC Santa Cruz. Daniel, thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. Your report compared the problems at San Onofre to other nuclear power plants uh, throughout the country. What did you find? We found that there were 400 times as many damaged steam generator tubes as in the typical reactor with new steam generators in the country. We found that there were a thousand times as many indications of wear as the typical reactor. One thousand. A thousand times as many. And in terms of numbers of plugged tubes, the number for a typical reactor is zero. And there are hundreds of plugged tubes at San Onofre. So these are very, very sick reactors. You asked for this data and, and had to find it on your own. Just tell me briefly how you compiled the data. Uh, we asked the NRC, and they said they didn't have it. So we then went through every inspection report for every new steam generator in the country, which is something they should have done. All right. I want to let viewers know before we go on that we did ask Southern California Edison to join us today, and they did decline. So coming back to your report, uh, your report was recorded at the U.S. Senate Committee hearing. Senator Boxer also uh, met with nuclear regulators and asked them to read it. Is this what you hoped for for your report, or do you want it to go even further? I think it needs to go further. Um, we're going to have a request for restarting Unit 2 from San Onofre uh, coming in, in the next few weeks. It's one of the most important decisions for Southern California. And these data and other data need to be considered before that decision is made. And that means really there ought to be a full evidentiary hearing, which both Edison and NRC are resisting. Remind us what the tube generators do, why they were important, and what actually caused the shutdown. They're critical devices. They are designed to re remove heat from the core so it doesn't melt down and to uh, prevent radioactivity from getting out into the environment. And if those tubes burst, you can both lose cooling and you can have this released directly to us. So they can't be damaged. They cannot be uh, functioning in a, a condition that they uh, pose a risk of bursting. And, and these tubes are very thin, just so people know. These are very thin and they're delicate, correct? They have to be very thin so you can transfer heat and very strong so they don't burst. And those two are competing pressures. Um, you called the reactors ill. You said they were sick um, and their problems are significantly worse. Why are they significantly worse? Well, um, Is it an age? The remarkable thing is these are new steam generators. They sh should not be showing this wear for decades, and they're showing it in a year or two. And so they are very much worse than the typical reactor in the country. And what worries me is that there's an effort to start them up without fixing the damaged steam generators or replacing them. Just run it some at lower power and hope for the best. And that's not a particularly prudent approach to reactor safety. Yeah, the NRC did say they'll take months to kind of review the restart process, but couldn't one or other reactors go online at San Onofre, or is it all interlinked? At the end of that uh, several-month review period, the decision by NRC will be to whether to permit restart, and I am concerned that that is a somewhat foregone conclusion. Southern California Edison said they're going to send a letter to NRC, as we talked about, or a report detailing the problems with the tube wear. What do you suspect will be in that report? I think what they're going to say is that they believe that if they run the reactor at lower power, um, it might be okay, and they would like to do that and see if things work out. It's a little bit like someone who has bad brakes on their car, and rather than fixing or replacing the brakes, says, I'll just keep the speed below 50 miles an hour. It's not a really sensible solution in the long term. Do you think that the public here has been misled about the seriousness of this problem? Yes. It took me months to get data out of NRC and Edison as to how many bad tubes there were in the core. It took Senator Boxer's intervention. And that kind of tells you that there's something that they're nervous about. And those data, when they finally came out, show that these were really, really troubled uh, steam generators. And I can understand why they didn't want to release it, but they should have. Okay. Daniel Hirsch, thanks so much for talking with us. We're out of time right now, but we can hear from you on our website, kpbs.org, and hear a lot more about it. But thanks Thank for you very much. Us.